Hello everyone, welcome to Electronically Connected. So in this video, we will be learning more about 4-bit binary parallel adder, which is also known as a 4-bit ripple carry adder. We will be learning a bit detail about how it is constructed and what is the logic behind it. Also, we will be covering the advantages and disadvantages of using such kind of an adder. So let's get started. So let's first understand what a parallel adder is. It's basically a digital circuit which is capable of finding arithmetic sum of two binary numbers which is greater than one bit in length by operating on the corresponding parts of bits in parallel. So we have learned what a full adder is on the previous videos. So let's draw a full adder block. We have a full adder which has inputs A and B. Each of this is a one bit in. And then we have another input C in giving out two outputs sum and carry. So similarly, let's assume that we have an, again two numbers A and B, but on the contrast, here which was a one bit adder, we are now going to be creating four bit adders. So that means A and B, each of these are four bits. So starting from the MSB side, we have A3, A2, A1, and A0. Similarly, we have B3, B2, B1, and B0. Let's add both of these together with the concept of keeping in mind that we have a full adder. So the three inputs of a full adder are A, B and a C in, right? So that means let's take this as a C0. So we have a carry 0 as well. So if we add all three of these together, what do we get? Sum 0 and there's a carry which gets carry forwarded over here and which is C1. So then A1 plus B1 plus C1 gives you again S1 and there's a carry which is C2 then A plus A2 plus B2 plus C2 gives you sum 2 again we have a carry bit C3 then we have A3 plus B3 plus C3 which will give you sum 3 and the final carry out now this carry out it can either be 1 or it can be 0 so if it becomes a 1 that means we have a 5 bit sum Correct, because it will be calculated as S4, let's say. And if we have a 0, that means it remains a 4-bit sum. And there we have it, the basic concept behind a parallel adder. Now let us see how we can project the same logic behind a parallel adder into a 4-bit binary parallel adder or we can say a n-bit binary parallel adder using the block diagrams of a full adder. So let us first draw the full adder blocks just a full adder blocks for n times at least are full adder 1, full adder 2, full adder 3. So each full adder is going to be corresponding to each bit. So that means bit 1, bit 2, bit 3 and this is going to be so on for full adder n minus 1 and then the final full adder block for the nth bit. Now let us see how the inputs are going to be defined. So we have two inputs A1 and B1. We're going to have our input C1. Again we're going to have A2, B2, A3, B3 and so on. And then finally again we will have A n minus 1, b n minus 1 and a n b n. Now how is the sum and add carry going to be defined? So the c1 plus a1 plus b1 is going to give us the first bit of our sum and the carry from the first full adder is going to be given out as a carry for the second full adder. We will have our second bit for the sum which will give you another bit for the carry out another bit of the sum and this will keep on happening and we will have another bit which comes from your carry we will have sum n minus 1 carry bit we will have our sum sn and at the end we will have our final c out So there we have it. 
This is how an n bit binary parallel adder will be defined. And if we have to just define, let's say, 4 bit, so we will just have 4 full adder blocks 1, 2, 3, and another block. And the inputs are going to be defined, and the output sum and carry are going to be defined for 4 times. So that is sum 1. S1, S2, S3, and S4, and we have the four bits of our sum. Now let us see some of the advantages and disadvantages of using a this kind of parallel adder. Due to the parallel nature of our adder, the operations are much faster and the time required is not because the output is in a parallel form and hence all the operations are done simultaneously. This leads to using the less cost for an adder. But on the other hand, each block of adder for each bit has to wait for the carry to be generated from the previous adder in chain. So as I mentioned previously, if there's a 4-bit adder, so we have 4 blocks of our full adder. So if block 1 generates carry 1, then block 2 has to wait for the carry to be generated by the block 1 so that it can carry forward with the operation. So that wait leads to the increase in the propagation delay. So Propagation delay is found to increase with increase in a num number of bits. But however, there is a way to reduce the propagation delay and that type of adder is called a carry look ahead adder which will be discussed in the next video. Another thing that I would like to mention is that a 4 bit parallel binary adder is denoted by the IC number of IC7483. So an IC7483 is actually a parallel adder. Each kind of type of adder has an own representation of an IC number and it gets easier to choose when designing a whole circuit. In the next video, we will be discussing what a carry look ahead adder is and how it is constructed. With this, we come to the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Till then, happy learning. See you next time.